Did we do it? Such a pity. You understand fate, yet you still fight against it with all of your will. If more people were like you, then perhaps the fall could have been prevented. But it's too late now. Last. So you still managed to make it. To see the end of the world, huh, Takaya? the moon?
So all the students from Gekukan. The old couple. Officer Kurosawa. Okay. Gotta stay calm. That's key as well. Just like Fuku was when she saved me. I'm the one who said we'll always be connected. That's how I know you're still hanging in there, Fuka. Scared as hell right now. Are you saying you s somehow remember that time when... How the heck do you... Oh wait, no, because the dark hour. Everyone's in the dark hour now. That, that makes sense. But I won't give up. Right, Fuka? There's no need to worry. This isn't the afterlife. You're still alive. Ego. Do you remember what I once told you? How the strength of your social links will determine your potential. Listen. Can you hear the many voices? Each one's power is limited. Yet they all reach out to you. Can you feel them? Yes. I sense them. Close your eyes and listen carefully. Their voices may be faint, but certainly you hear them. A mysterious mass of energy is gathering. The powerful emotions of your friends and loved ones are flowing into your heart. I'll always have your back, Cohen. All I can do right now is pray. But whatever it is, man, I know you can do it. I know you're facing a difficult task, but I, tr I truly believe that you can overcome any obstacle. Something frightful's going on, but we won't give up. That's why, right, dear. Koen-chan wouldn't want us to lose hope. Something crazy's going on here, but I know you're out there doing all you can, Koen. So I won't lose my cool either. You taught me that. Oh god, this can't be happening. I wish I could talk to him, and calm myself down. I don't even know what he looks like, but I hope he's okay. He has to be. I can feel it. Yeah, that's Miss Toyumi. Everyone else is scared, but not me. You showed me how to be tough. I won't give up. Koen sama how are you doing? I hope you are okay. I am here for you, like you were there for me. What on earth made you think of... What on earth made me think of you at a time like this? Well, I suppose you did teach me a thing or two about loyalty. You must be fighting the good fight right about now. Well, you taught me that running away never solves nothing. So I'm here for you, kid. I'll take on any challenge that comes my way without complaining about it. You taught me that, Cohen. I bet you're fighting right now too, huh? You saved me, Cohen. I was so blind before. I'm sure you've got things under control, right? You always do. 
I know I'm not the only one who suffered. You've endured a lot, too. But you can't just give up. You taught me that. Can you hear them? Yes. These are the voices of hope that wish to help you. Separately, they are weak. But together, they will bring about a great change in you. Now is the time to draw on the true strength of the bonds you have forged. What's that? Is that... the world? I never dreamed of seeing that card with my own eyes. Is that... the Arcana world? This is indeed a surprise. Behold, the last power you and I shall unveil. It is the power to bring about a new beginning. Or the ultimate end. <sighs> it may be possible now, with this newfound power. You may be able to defeat the one who cannot be defeated. You mean I can defeat Nyx with that? What you have in your hands is the power of the universe. <sighs> Nothing is outside the realm of possibility for you now. We will soon reach your destination. It seems that in addition to death, fate has also dealt you the wild card. The wild card? You must accept your destiny. Our contract has been fulfilled. I have completed my role as well. You were truly a remarkable guest. Can't cause this romance thing. Bastards in heavy 
Did Nyx create this place, or was it him? Is he all right, Fuka? What happened? Everything was engulfed by a bright light. I don't sense him. Don't tell me he... No, that can't be. Try again. He can't be the only one. You gotta be kidding me. Damn it! Not again! We all decided to put our lives on the line. In fact, we came here knowing we would most likely die. How could I be so powerless? This is what I was trying to prevent. You're there, aren't you? I know you are! I refuse to believe that you're gone! Answer me! I know you can hear me! We're here. Please let us hear your voice. Everyone is desperately calling out to you. It's alright! I guess. <gasps> Yukari! Don't worry. That voice. I will sleep once again. Normal days will return to this universe for you. And for him. He's found the answer to life's greatest question. It just happened a bit sooner than it will for the rest of you. 
Life's greatest question. Ryoji. I guess you'll find the answer one day as well. You two are a precious living thing. You just need to realize how the bonds of friendship have changed you. The dark hour will soon vanish from this world. All will truly be relinquished from its dominion, and the legacy of life will continue. Congratulations. You have the miracle you sought. We shall meet again someday. The battle has ended. Tartarus and the Dark Hour have disappeared. By an unexpected miracle, the world was saved from the fall. Peace was restored, and people resumed their busy lives. No one remembered anything about the extraordinary turn of events. And so, the season changed. One month later. Yo! Jinfei! Damn, it's cold. But of course, you never miss a day of school. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Man, can you believe this year's already over? We're practically seniors now. Just one more year. You think anything interesting will happen? Um, hard to tell. Never know. Well, seeing the current seniors makes me wonder. Seems like all they frickin' do is study. <laughs> Talk about boring. You know, it wouldn't kill you to study every once in a while, Jinpei. Is that gonna be us next year? Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Maybe it's because you are. I guess. Hey, it, is that girl looking at us? Dude, she's pretty cute. How come I never noticed her before? Oh wait, uh, right, our memories, because of the dark hour. What are you talking about? She lives in the same dorm as us. Seriously? Uh, what's her name then? I don't know. Everyone has so forgotten. Why are you giving me a hard time? Anyway, it's always crazy in the dorms this time of year, with so many people coming and going. Oh yeah, did you hear? Akihiko-senpai's moving out. 
Really? Yeah, you know, too. The captain of the boxing team. I know who he is, but I haven't really talked to him. Of course, all the graduates are leaving, even Kirijo Senpai. Well, that's to be expected. Student Council President. She's in our dorm too, huh? Hey there. Are you looking at us? Is something wrong? Um, it's nothing. So we she all have forgotten her, doesn't she? Wait, do you think she might be interested in one of us? <laughs> I doubt it. Ouch, that hurts. By the way, Yukitan. Uh, never mind. Forget it. Aw, oh, come on now. Don't give me that. Um, well... Do you remember how we became friends? I mean, don't take it the wrong way. I was just thinking. Well, it's not like we're best friends or anything, so I guess it just... Kind of happened. You telling me you can't even remember how you became friends? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. My goodness. What happened? It is kind of weird, actually, now that I think about it. But I can't really explain why. Anyway, that girl. Oh crap! Oh, well, time for school. We better hurry to class. Class has ended for today. So, what do I do? Where do I go? Who do I talk to? Hey, um... Kenji, how's it going? Sup, Cohen? Dude, I've got a super important announcement to make. Wanna hear? Huh? Okay, here goes. And this is just between you and me, okay? Next year, there are three fine-looking women teachers coming in. After Emmy, I mean, Miss Canal, uh, Miss Canal leaves, there's no spark to the faculty roster, right? Miss Toyumi has that weird secret she refuses to tell anyone. Miss Aonishi is obsessed with medicine. Miss Tarachi is like going to India or somewhere. I mean, come on! Even our nurse is a guy. Even if he's good at a job. Nurses are supposed to be girls. He's running my lifelong dream to fake sick, ditch class and ch chat with the hot nurse. You okay, dude? You're not looking so good. You should see the nurse. But, uh, I'm not going with you, dude. Oh, oh, and I heard those new teachers are coming by today to check out the campus. I'm thinking about hanging around the faculty office to scope them out. Wanna come? Uh, alright. Wise decision, oh Sir Cohen. See, starting next year, we can choose our homeroom. So we've got to make sure we choose the right one, if you catch my drift. Wait a minute. Oh, crap! Today's not March 3rd, is it? It is. Mmm! Sorry, man. I gotta get lost before she gets here. Who's she? M my little sis. She'll be coming here starting next year, but... She's gonna swing by today and look around. Well, that's not... Uh, but I'm not gonna be her damn tour guide. I don't wanna be... I don't wanna lead her around by the hand where everyone can see. Okay. Uh, I wish I had an older sister instead. 
Well, whatever. I'm gonna jet. Latest coin. Uh, sure. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna be on my way as well. Where exactly do I go, though? More importantly, where's I guess? Oh, it's the coach. Oh, Cohen, I was just looking for you. This came for you from Mamoru. I bet his school is sorry he's gone. But it's good news for us, because now there's nothing standing between us and total victory. See you around. You received a letter from Mamoru. You opened the letter. Oh, I don't even get to read it. Oh, wait, no, I do. I was... How are things, Cohen? I never knew you address. I never knew your address, so I'm sending this to your school. Mamoru's firm handwriting fills the page. I'm doing good. I'm starting to get used to the job too. But what I, oh, oh the burps. But what I really wanted to talk to you about was Kendo Team. Before I had. Totally given up on the idea of continuing Kendo Team. But even so, part of me still didn't want to let it go. I had to do it, but Kendo Team was my whole life. Your picture you picture Mamoru's wry smile. <laughs> I guess the plant manager realized what's up. He's helping me out. We're gonna make a Kendo team. Well, I call it a team. But it's really just a few guys at the factory. We practice after work and sometimes on our days off. The other day, we did endurance swimming at Lake Baiwa. We've been, we've even climbed Mount Haie. We don't have fancy equipment like before, so it's not as efficient. But I'm enjoying myself. Most of the guys are just in, uh, just in it for fun, and we don't do much serious training, but I guess it's a good handicap for me. How about you? You're still at it, right? I'm sure you're just gonna keep getting better and better. I'm almost as anxious for you to improve as I used to be about myself. It's a strange feeling. So hey, Cohen, one day, you and I are gonna go at it again. This time, it'll be my turn to be your rival and get things going. It feels nice, having a goal. I can't believe I had forgotten what that was like. Oh yeah, and my mom's getting better. She's in a, she's in a sanatorium which, with fresh air and good doctors. My relatives and friends come by the house so my brothers are well taken care of too. Everything's going great these days. I feel like I'm able to take care of the people who matter to me. It's really fulfilling, and it's thanks to you that it's all come together. So, thanks man. Can't wait to see you again, Cohen. You better be ready. The letter ends there. Nobody else is on the rooftop. At this point, I might as well just go straight to the dormitory. I can't really find anybody. Oh hey, it's Mr. What's the Oh no. Andre Lowent. Andre Lowent. Jean Joe. Oh, uh, that's too long. A samurai's name should be simple and short. Oh, Cohen. I think this letter is for you. It's all in hiragana, but if it's not yours, could you give it to whoever it's for? It's from Andre. Whatever. I can't remember those long foreign names. When he was in my class, we just called him BB. Ah, uh, yeah, I figured that was BB's real name, Andre. You took the letter from Mr. Ono. The sender's name is listed as Andre Laurent Jean. Uh, Girard. Is it Girard or Girox? I assume it because it's French, it's pronounced Girard. It's from BB. You open the envelope. Am I going back to the rooftop? 
Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Something tells me we're just gonna go through the letters of everybody. <laughs> By the time we do reach the dormitory in a pub our public party episode there. Hello, Cohen Sama. This is BB. Oh boy, I did not miss that voice. BB's halting words line the pages. The kanji is difficult for me, so I'm sorry this is all in the iwagana. I learned a lot in Japan, but BB is still not that good. I write this with a dictionary. <laughs> BB showed Uncle the kimono. He, he had much praise for it. He, had, he said that Japan is a great country. BB is so happy to hear this. So I tell Uncle that I want to go back to the Japan. I tell it. I tell him many times. He say. Okay. You can picture BB's smiling face. But BB decided not to go back. I'm sorry, Cohen Summer. I said I'd come back, but this is a lie. BB didn't know. My aunt wasn't the only one who helped me study abroad. Uncle, relatives, neighbors, many people helped. They all wanted me to go back. They said we will help pay for it. But my uncle is sad that my aunt died. Bibi cannot enjoy Japan while uncle is grief. Bibi cannot take everyone's money for his own fun. Learning about Japan can be done in France too. That's why Bibi will stay in France. When BB is strong enough on his own, then I will come to Japan again. BB's handwriting has left an impression in the paper. He seems very determined. BB thought about how fun it is to make clothes with Koen Sama and entered the school of fashion. I made a clothes for the school contest. BB won first prize! I named these clothes that won first place. Cohen, a wonderful name. It is the name BB likes. Japan and France, Cohen Sama and BB, they are far apart. But I will always be close. Even if you can't see me, that will not change. Every day was fun. A lot. I wish I can see you again someday. To my precious friend, Cohen Sama, BB. The words near the end are blurred. Ah, Kazushi! Hey, Cohen, what's up? I wanted to talk to you, man. I just heard back from the hospital about my knee. The results are in. And it's 100% healed! They said I can keep doing Kendo Team! Dude, I was so happy! I almost broke the doctor's back, I hugged him so hard! But thinking about it now, if I'd kept hiding the pain in my knee, I get goosebumps, man. I was pushing myself too hard, trying to catch up to you, and I got pissed off, cause... Nothing seemed to go right. I went too far again and shut my knee all to, all to hell. Man, I was acting like a little kid. I thought so, anyway. I kept saying it was all for my nephew, but it was just my pride. And I got you, the guys on the team, and my parents worried for nothing. Man, I was such a, I was such a baby. Such an baby. No, 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 no. That's supposed to be just a, just a. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Well, at least I finally snapped out of it, even if it took me long enough. Thanks, Cohen. I couldn't have done it with, 
I couldn't have done it if you hadn't been there for me. I swear, right here, right now, that I'm gonna do better next year. I'm not gonna jump to conclusions like that. I'm gonna listen to people. It's hard for me, but... Well, that's about it. I just wanted to tell you first. Now, I'm gonna head to the faculty office and tell everyone there. And then tell the team. Dude, are you alright? You look kinda tired. Go get some rest, man. Your health is the most important thing, right? We're still signed up for the spring tournament. If you slack off, man, I'm gonna leave you in the dust. Later. Huh. That's That's been both Kenji and, uh, Kazushi to worry about my health. Huh. Is there something really wrong with me? Hello, Korn-kun. You don't look good. Are you okay? Well, time flies. It's already March. There's something I wanted to tell you. We'll still be able to talk to each other next year, but... I wanted to say this while we're still both on the student council. I'm going to quit the council. I'm just not going to apply next year. That cigarette business gave me a lot of to think about. This may sound odd, but do you think this country is headed in the right direction? I think so. I see. Well, I feel differently. You're an optimistic man, so maybe society looks different through your eyes. Around January, there was a sinister cult growing in popularity. A society without a future. For many people out there, that's the reality. I was thinking how we could change that. What it would take to change society. I thought maybe one influential person could start a revolution. But starting a revolution just because you have the power to do it creates more problems. That's what the Nixis incident taught me. I realized how naive I had been. Now, I think the best thing for a society is more education. Things that each of us have to learn before going out into the world. That's what's needed most. So, I'm thinking of becoming a teacher. A society is dictated by its people. If we improve the people's minds, society will be likewise improved. Aren't you going to laugh at me? Say something like, You? A teacher? Don't laugh. Nope. I see. I'll do my best. That's all I wanted to tell you. That, and to say thanks. It was thanks to you that I reached this conclusion. Sure thing, Hidetoshi. Well, let's see who else we can chat with. I'm assuming Nozomi is over... Let me see. There's the Naganaki Shrine near a Todai Station. I could go see the old couple over there. I want to go to the shrine real quick. Doesn't seem like there's anybody around. Oh! Hello. Hello there. Oh, you must be... Um, by any chance is your name Koenkun? Yes. I see. So, you're Koenkun. Oh, excuse me. I'm... Mrs. Kamiki. You're Akinawi's mother? Akinawi's mother. My son talked about you a lot. I was just thinking about him. If you have time, could you sit here and talk about him with me? Okay. That's wonderful. Please, sit down. Today is... a special day. What's so special about today? What a coincidence, seeing you today. It must be another of God's tricks. Today is my son's, Akinami's birthday. The 3rd of March? He'd be 20 if he was still alive. Ah, oh, only 19 years. It wasn't long enough. He was almost an adult, but he never made it. 
He had a genetic disease. Me? I'm healthy as a horse, but him? The doctors detected it at birth. They knew he wouldn't live to see it adulthood. Every day, I wondered if he'd wake up the next morning. I blamed myself for what he inherited. But he said something to me near the end. I'm sorry to have brought so much pain into your life, mother. I'm glad to have been given life. I'm glad to have been to, to have been your son. Thank you so much for the life you have given me. That's what he said. He was the one who suffered so much, and yet he said that to me. But my son brought me a lot of joy too, holding his warm body in my arms just after he was born. Those tiny hands, that first smile, hearing him breathe easily at night. Every day, I gave thanks for him being alive. Every day, I found new joy in him. And now, I'm so lonely, and there's nothing I can do. But my boy gave me so much that I have to keep on going, looking straight ahead. That's how I feel. I'll eat the finest foods, visit the, the most exotic places, everything my boy could never do. I'll have so much, I'll have so many stories to tell him about the things I've done on that day when we meet again on the other side. If I didn't have that to look forward to, I don't know how I could go on. That reminds me. When my son's condition worsened, he started writing a fable. But when I was cleaning out his room, I never found the notebook. He said he was going to show it to you first, when he was done. I asked why not me, and he laughed and said, You'll be the second one to see it, Mom. I suppose he wasn't able to finish the story. I have the notebook. My son, he was able to give it to you. You explained how you received the notebook from Akinari, and that you heard the entire story from him. I... I see. I'm so glad. That was my only regret. It was awful to think that he wasn't able to finish his project. I see. You should hold on to the notebook. I'm sure that's what my boy would have wanted. I'll wait for him to tell it to me himself when I see him again. <laughs> now I have something else to look forward to. I'm glad you and I could finally meet. Thank you. There is one piece of advice I'd like to give you as an old lady to a young man. Take good care of the ones dearest to you. If you wait until their time has come, and you're clinging to their cold bodies, then it's too late. Everyone who's born will die someday. Not just Akinari, or me, or you. It happens to everyone. So before that happens, it doesn't take a grand gesture. You don't have to make a big production of it, but... If you love someone, let them know it. We all go through life with the same struggles, the same heartbreak. We should be able to prop each other up with the same love and kindness as well. I'm sure you have something precious you can share with people. Always remember that. Huh? Where, where's Nozomi? He's not here? Who the heck are you? Aren't you the boy who used to talk to the monk upstairs? He actually called here trying to reach you. I think he had a message for you, but I can't quite remember it. Hey, hey, don't freak out. Just hang on a sec. The bartender walked into the club. Here you go. I wrote it down. Good thinking, huh? But my handwriting isn't so good. I hope, I hope you can read it. 
I found my wife and son. My son's a good for nothing punk, and my wife is frigid as usual. That witch. What? Hey, shut up, I'm on the phone. And l a lot's happened, but I apologize. A lot's happened, but I apologized a thousand times, and everything's back to normal now. I can't. I can't believe I did that without doing his proper voice. I guess you could say we're back in love with each other. I realized, rather than holding onto my pride, I needed to suck it up and apologize. Thanks to you, Corin. Take care, kid. Till we meet again. That's the end of it. I hope I didn't miss anything. I'm surprised you could do a great impersonation of him, bartender. He didn't leave any contact info or anything, but I'm sure you'll meet him again somewhere. Hey, maybe you should become a monk. Those guys all know each other, right? <laughs> anyway, stop by this place anytime if you want a drink. As soon as you're over 21, of course. See ya! Uh, that seems to be the end of that. Okay. Uh, okay, nothing to chat with you two. Is the velvet room still here? Or is it actually gone? It is gone. Seems like the only place that I could still go to is Iwatodai Station. There is the old couple here. Just want to check around if there's anybody that I might have missed. I wonder if Maya's here today. At the Takoyaki. Her father's here. Hmm? You're. Colin Kun, right? I'm. Maiko's dad. Oh, Maiko, that's what it was, not Maya. Why did I think it was Maya? If you have a mo minute, could we sit and talk for a while? Alright. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. Here, have a seat. Want some takoyaki? The stand here is really good. Oh, I guess you know already, huh? When I see this place, I remember all the times I'd come here with Maiko. She came here when I she ran away from home too. She really loved the takoyaki. She was a good kid, huh? You're right. She's so good that I wonder if she's really my kid sometimes. I got a letter from Maiko. It's long and full of details about her new life over there. She says she's made a lot of friends. Let's see. She's in charge of the rabbits at her new school and she has to get up early to clean the cages. They yelled at her for forgetting her PE uniform. She forgot her homework and had to copy her friends. I never knew she was that forgetful. Oh, and she did so well at her recorder test that she was asked to perform in front of everyone. Then she goes on to talk about how she plays at the park right by the school with her friends every day. Her mother's doing well too. They're having a lot of fun together. Having fun. Sounds nice. Nowadays, I come home to an empty house. The room seems so big without them. I wonder if she feels the same way about her house, now that there's no dad in it. We put that kid through so much on account of our own problems. I feel terrible about it all. Anyway, as for you... Oh, yeah, I forgot about this part. 
You little punk. Seems Micah really took a shine to you. She wrote all about you. I can't wait to grow up, Dad. That's that's why I'm drinking lots of milk. I'm going to marry him someday. <laughs> oh, what's up with that, you punk? Y you were taking advantage of my little Micah, weren't you? Maybe I haven't been the best dad, but I'm still a father, damn it! And I'm not letting a guy like you touch Micah with a ten-foot pole. I'll never let you marry her. Don't forget about it. Well, how about you take a twelve-step program off a ten-step pier? Michael's dad ran off. Jeez, touchy. Hey, I wasn't the one who asked for this, okay? That's her decision. You can't just... Uh, but... Plan B... Okay, nope. What the... West John employees are being interviewed. I heard that the key to Hagakue's success is its secret menu. Can you tell us more about that? It's a little embarrassing, but... One day, this student saw what I was preparing and said he wanted to try some. I didn't want to give it to him, but he insisted. So I made him a bowl. He tasted it and said, Hmm, put some fish flakes in. So I did, and you know what? It was a good... It, it was so good, I decided to put it on the menu. Though it wasn't my idea, so I kept it as a secret menu item only. I didn't really appreciate his attitude, but I learned a lot from that kid. He's getting more and more popular in this strip mall. He's pretty much an idol here. An idol? Him? Oh yes, Nozomi is the one who made this coffee shop famous. His appearance and mannerisms may be eccentric. But he has an encyclopedic knowledge of food and a discerning palate. No one else comes close. All our patrons know him. All of them? Huh? How do you feel about his announced plans to leave here and tour the world of food? I was devastated, of course. But I wish him well in whatever he wants to do. I heard he's working on a book. I can't wait to read it. Even though he's far away by now, I feel like he's right next to me. I hope his journey goes well for him. The interview continues. Ah, uh, old couple. Good to see you. Oh, hello, Cohen chan How have you been? You've grown so much since the last time I saw you. Come on, dear. There's no way he could have grown that much in so short a time. What must have happened? What must have happened is that we shrank, right, Koen chan Ah, good point. Good point. You've got me there. By the way, Koen chan I'm thinking of giving this old place a, re a remodeling. I'll make it even showier than the wing uh, they're adding to Gekukan. Speaking of which, the schools decided to move the persimmon tree to another field. It'll be replanted on a hill where you can see the whole campus. So our sons can still watch over the school and its students. I know that tree isn't really our son, but it still makes me happy. Once my dear wife heard, she couldn't stop crying. Come on, smile. Ah! Don't yell, dear. Your dentures will fall out. Anyhow, we'll support the Gekukan High students as best we can. You look very mature now, Koen chan You must have been working so hard. Come visit us anytime. Gladly. I believe that's about everyone that I could pretty much talk to. I just want to check Port Island Station. If there's nothing there, then we'll head straight to the dorm. Hopefully I'll be able to save uh, by the time I reach the dorm. Let's just take a look, see around here. No. Let's 
I was, uh, okay, nope. You don't have anything important to talk about. Uh, let's head down over here. I wonder if these guys are... Nah, they don't seem to care about Shinjiro. Then again, they, those guys probably didn't know who Shinji was. Alright, off to the dorm. Nothing else I can do. Doesn't seem like there's anybody here. TV is left on. The news is on. Hmm? Coming up next, a special report on the Amazing Commodities Corps of the Tanaka's Amazing Commodities Program. President Tanaka's failure to account for certain expenditure, exp expenditures has caused a media stir lately. We now join our field reporter, live from the scene. I'm reporting from the Amazing Commodities head office where a swarm of journalists has convened. Word has it that President Tanaka will be coming out shortly to make a statement. The tension in the air here can't be denied. Thank you, and we'll be looking forward to updates as soon as anything happens. Back to the studio. The unaccounted expenditure has sparked a massive investigation. Some theorize that tax invasion is the cause. Oh, there's no question about that. I remind you that this is President Tanaka we're talking about. He tricks his own viewers for a few extra bucks. I bet he'd slit his mama's throat for a 5 yen piece. No matter how high his net worth rises, he'll never be satisfied. He's lower than the scum on any earthworm's belly. All that money and no charities ever seen a dime. Well, I'm sure he's not as bad as all that. Oh, this is just in. Something has happened at the scene. President Tanaka has emerged. He's carrying a microphone. It looks like he's going to... sing? Here comes Tanaka over the airwaves to you. Grant of your desires. Hi everyone, Amazing Commodities is here for you for you year round, rain or shine. We have a monopoly on the cheapest, highest quality goods. Our customers' ecstatic screams cause noise pollution. Our stocks rise so high they're a hazard to birds, and we make losers every day out of people who don't buy. We're the only miracle left in this sad, desolate world. That's the amazing commodities guarantee. We look forward to your business. President Tanaka's car drove off. Oh, he he's gone. What the hell are you doing? You call yourself a journalist? If you can't get one lousy comment out of him, it's as good as free advertising. We'll have to interrupt you there as we've just received a fax. It's from President Tanaka. The message reads, Hi, this is Tanaka, the best friend your pocketbook ever had. And what's in my pocketbook is my own business. It's not my company's money. So what's it to it? <sighs> so what's it to them, how I use it? But let me ask, but let me make one thing clear. I'm not ashamed of a single thing. My conscience is clear, dear viewers, so buy my products guilt free. Amazing commodities, here for you year round, rain or shine, buy now or drown in bitter tears. Bye bye. Apparently he had no intention of revealing his use for the funds. Has this Tanaka no shame? Just because he's made some money for himself doesn't mean he can toy with the common man's emotions. As self-appointed representative of Joe Q Public, I have something to say and I'm not afraid to say it. 
fat pigs like him who gorge themselves on the excesses of capitalism should be... Thanks very much as we wrap up our special report. With no new clues as to how the funds have been used, we can only hope that they went to hum humanitarian purposes. Next up, your daily glimpse into the stock market, where amazing commodity stocks are skyrocketing on the strength of the bizarre revelations just now. The report continues. All is quiet. Doesn't seem like the others have returned yet. They all must be enjoying the peaceful evening. Even though you've just returned from school, you are feeling very tired. You should go to sleep early tonight. Yeah, I'll be doing that. But I'm gonna call the episode here for now. Because, uh, thank you so much for watching. Next time will be the finale of Persona 3 Fest. Until then, take care. Chaos Control!